welcome to our online worship. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're continuing to read from Henry Nouwen's book, The Only Necessary Thing. Um, we've been working through uh, this book for several weeks now and will continue for at least a few more weeks. So I invite you to listen, um, take part, and remind you that these are the author's words, not my own. It is clear that we are usually surrounded by so much inner and outer noise that it is hard to truly hear our God when God is speaking to us. We have often become deaf, unable to know when God calls us and unable to understand in which direction God calls us. Thus our lives have become absurd. In the word absurd, we find the Latin word surdus, which means deaf. A spiritual life requires discipline because we need to learn to listen to God, who constantly speaks, but whom we seldom hear. When, however, we learn to listen, our lives become obedient lives. The word obedient comes from the Latin word audire, which means listening. A spiritual discipline is, need, is necessary in order to move slowly from an absurd to an obedient life, from a life filled with noisy worries to a life in which there is some free inner space where we can listen to our God and follow God's guidance. Jesus' life was a life of obedience. He was always listening to the Father, always attentive to his voice, always alert for his directions. Jesus was all ear, that is true prayer, being all ear for God. The core of all prayer is indeed listening, obediently standing in the presence of God. When we enter into solitude, we will often hear these two voices, the voice of the world and the voice of the Lord, pulling us in two contrary directions. But if we keep returning faithfully to the place of solitude, the voice of the Lord will gradually become stronger and we will come to know and understand with mind and heart the peace we are searching for. What do we do in our solitude? The first answer is nothing. Just be present to the one who wants your attention and listen. It is precisely in this useless presence to God that we can gradually die to our illusions of power and control and give ear to the voice of love hidden in the center of our being. But doing nothing, being useless, is not as passive as it sounds. In fact, it requires effort and great attentiveness. It calls us to an act of listening in which we make ourselves available to God's healing presence and can be made new. The discipline of the heart makes us aware that praying is not only listening to, but also listening with. The discipline of the heart makes us stand in the presence of God with, with all we have and are, our fears and anxieties, our guilt and shame, our sexual fantasies, our greed and anger, our joys, successes, aspirations and hopes, our reflections, dreams and mental wandering, and most of all, our people, family, friends and enemies, in short, all that makes us who we are. With all this, we have to listen to God's voice and allow God to speak to us in every corner of our being. This is very hard since we are so fearful and insecure that we keep hiding ourselves from God. We tend to present to God only those parts of ourselves with which we feel relatively comfortable and which we think will evoke a positive response. Thus, our prayer becomes very selective and narrow, and not just our prayer, but also our self-knowledge, because by behaving as strangers before God, we become strangers to ourselves. 
Why is it so difficult to be still and quiet and let God speak to me about the meaning of my life? Is it because I don't trust God? Is it because I don't know God? Is it because I wonder if God really is there for me? Is it because I'm afraid of God? Is it because everything else is more real for me than God? Is it because deep down I do not believe that God cares what happens at the corner of Yonggi and Bloor? Still, there is a voice right there in downtown Tor Toronto. Come to me, you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Can I trust that voice and follow it? It is not a very loud voice, and often it is drowned out by the clamor of the inner city. Still, when I listen attentively, I will hear that voice again and again and come to realize it as the voice speaking to the deepest places of my heart. For me personally, prayer becomes more and more a way to listen to the blessing. I have read and written much about prayer, but when I go to a quiet place to pray, I realize that although I have a tendency to say many things to God, the real work of prayer is to become silent and listen to the voice that says good things about me. This might sound self-indulgent, but in practice it is a hard discipline. I am so afraid of being cursed, of hearing that I am no good or not good enough, that I quickly give in to the temptation to start talking and to keep talking in order to control my fears to gently push aside and silence the many voices that question my goodness and to trust that I will hear a voice of blessing that de that demands real effort. Have you ever tried to spend a whole hour doing nothing but listening to the voice that dwells deep in your heart? It is not easy to enter into the silence and reach beyond the many boisterous and demanding voices of our world and to discover there the small intimate voice saying, you are my beloved child, on you my favor rests. Still, if we dare to embrace our solitude and befriend our silence, we will come to know that voice. I do not want to suggest to you that one day you will hear that voice with your bodily ears. I'm not speaking about a hallucinatory voice, but, but about a voice that can be heard by the ear of faith, the ear of the inner heart. We, we must learn to live each day, each hour, yes, each minute, as a new beginning, as a unique opportunity to make everything new. Imagine that we could live each moment as a moment pregnant with new life. Imagine that we could live each day as a day full of promise. Imagine that we could walk through the new year, always listening to a voice saying to us, I have a gift for you and can't wait for you to see it. Is it possible that our imagination can lead us to the truth of our lives? Yes, it can. The problem is that we allow our past, which becomes longer and longer each year, to say to us, you know it all, you've seen it all, be realistic. The future will be just another repeat of the past. Try to survive it as best you can. There are many cunning foxes jumping on our shoulders and whispering in our ears the great lie. There's nothing new under the sun. Don't let yourself be fooled. So what are we to do? First, we must send the foxes back to where they belong in their foxholes. And then we must open our minds and our hearts to the voice that resounds through the valleys and hills of our life, saying, let me show you where I live among my people. My name is God with you. I will wipe away all the tears from your eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. We must choose to listen to that voice and every choice will open us a little more to discover the new life hidden in the moment, waiting eagerly to be born. It might be helpful to offer here a concrete suggestion. One good way to listen is to listen with a sacred text, a psalm 
or prayer, for instance. The Hindu spiritual writer Eknath Iswaran showed me the great value of learning a sacred text by heart and repeating it slowly in the mind, word by word, sentence by sentence. In this way, listening to the voice of love becomes not just a passive waiting, but an active attentiveness to the voice that speaks to us through the words of the scriptures. I spent many of my half hours of prayer doing nothing but slowly repeating the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. And as I let these words move from my mind to my heart, I began to experience, beyond all my restless emotions and feelings, the peace and love I was asking for in words. In this way, I also had a way to deal with my endless distractions. When I found myself wandering away far and wide, I could always return to my simple prayer and thereby listen again in my heart to the voice I so much wanted to hear. I've been reading from The Only Necessary Thing by Henry Nowen. Thank you very much for joining us this day. I invite you to join with me now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.